All right. Hey, everyone. Happy holidays to you all. And thank you for joining us uh, for this very special holiday cocktail episode of Dine Around Downtown Cooking at Home edition. Uh, if you are new to the program and have not seen any of our previous episodes, but would like to, you can check them out as well as some of our upcoming food programming on our website at downtownny.com slash dine around. Now, my name is Ron Dijon and I am the event manager at the Downtown Alliance. Uh, and we are the business improvement district for lower Manhattan, uh, always striving to help make downtown a cleaner, safer, and more vibrant place to work, live, and visit. One of the ways we do this is by providing support to local businesses. Now, Dine Around Downtown Cooking at Home Edition began in June of 2020 during the height of the pandemic and has been part of our continuing efforts to provide support to local restaurants and food security charities that have been impacted by COVID-19. And today our featured restaurant uh, has chosen No Kid Hungry as their food security charity. To learn more about this organization and how you can donate, visit nokidhungry.org. And for your convenience, I have just shared that link in the chat box. So you can go ahead and click there and support them and just go ahead and donate a dollar, five dollars, whatever you can do. Everything helps. Um, okay, just a couple of um, housekeeping items uh, that we wanna do before we begin. Uh, and that is, we want to let everyone know that this demo is being recorded and the link uh, will be sent to everyone who signed up for this particular episode tomorrow via email. Uh, so we'll send that out to you. Uh, and during this program, if you have any questions for our guest or our host, please submit them using the Q&A feature. And that is located, if you have a desktop or laptop, it's usually at the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you're using a mobile device, such as a phone, iPad, or tablet, you can just tap it and on, uh, it's sometimes at the bottom, but sometimes it's on the top right. So uh, just so you know where it is. Uh, and yep, and the chat box I will reserve for us to share with you guys any helpful links and detailed information throughout the show. Uh, and so one of the ones I wanna share with you right now is what we call the poster plate contest. And let me go ahead and send that to you. So you have that and bring it up. And so uh, this is a chance for anyone who's following at home and whipping up these special cocktails uh, and trying the recipes today or even during the weekend, you can enter to win a 30 minute private virtual cocktail tutorial with tonight's guest. So simply create your, your drink, post it on Instagram and use the hashtag dine around at home and tag at downtown NYC. And also tag the restaurant and Rocco, our host, uh, because I'm sure they'd love to see what you guys did. Um, okay. I think that's everything on my end. Uh, so I think, let me just check. Yes, great. So without further ado, <laughs> I want to welcome your host, James Beard, award-winning chef and New York Times bestselling author, Rocco Despierdo. You there, Rocco? Ah, hey, happy holidays, hello, everybody. Rocco. How are you? It's <laughs> nice to be back. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm, a, I'm very excited to be here for um, a so special an edition of Downtown Diner and at Home. I had to put on a suit and tie uh, and a full face of makeup. So don't, nothing weird going on here. I'm not shooting TV or anything like that. This is just every day for me. Uh, thank you, Ron. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you, uh, Craig, for setting this up and for thinking of this wonderful idea two, over two years ago. Well, I think we've done somewhere in the, in the 20 to 30 episode range, and we're super excited to have you back and to be here for you again. Today's guest is none other than uh, Cameron Winkleman from Manhattan, uh, you know, already a legendary restaurant of, of New York City, one of the powerhouse restaurants downtown at 28 uh, Liberty Street. I was just there the other day uh, meeting with all the people working on this project, and I have to tell you, it's a gorgeous restaurant with uh, unmatched views and just uh, spectacular all around. Every room, one room is more beautiful than the other, and uh, the staff and service and floor uh, food uh, looked amazing and delicious and, and really warm. Uh, you know, I, every uh, Danny Meyer project, every uh, Union Square Hospitality project is uh, a warm experience and a warm environment because people are so sweet and uh, endearing and really understand hospitality. 
Uh, but you would you would expect a place at the top of a tall building to not be as warm, but they managed to overcome that uh, and and make it a, a wonderful feature without uh, it being uh, at all, you know, strange. So you know, when you're surrounded by 360 degree views, it can it can be a little overwhelming, but not here. Cameron Winkleman uh, joined 2022 as the head bartender of the reopening team of Manhattan, and uh, he started in Seattle. I'll let him tell you his life story, but he's he's got a lot of uh, bona fides. has um, has been working at a lot of wonderful places in New York and across the country for uh, many years, uh, and um, he has created uh, three, I believe, three recipes for us today that are uh, going to be super interesting. I tried the cocktails; they were delicious. Uh, I'd love to now introduce him, uh, Cameron. Please join us when you can. We'd love to see you and uh, get a view of get a view of your view. Oh, I see. I know what room you're in. What's going on, Cameron? How are you? Nice to see Good. you. How are you? You look rested and ready, and you've got that gorgeous view behind you. Yeah, and you look great too. No one can tell you're wearing makeup from right. the photo. I know. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. That made me feel a lot better. Um, you know, let us know what what we what you you prepared for us for today and what's what's in store. Yeah, so we have like two two cocktails um, okay. going on. These are pretty involved, so it'll probably use up all the time we have. Yeah. Um, more broadly speaking, to like what I do at Manhattan, it's using a lot of like culinary techniques with the uh, the ingredients, and then translating that into basically like a liquid form. So even yeah. today, we're going to be like sous viding something. Uh, doing a fat wash, so using like basically brown butter, putting that into a cocktail. Uh, yeah, that's it's basically what we do. Generally, it's all about uncommon flavor pairings. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody's yeah. had a normal eggnog, you know, not necessarily with brown butter, hazelnut, and pandan, uh -huh. like a Southeast Asian leaf. No, that know? definitely so. sets it apart without question. Did you say that some ingredients are sous vide, so they're cooked in a circulator and uh, vacuum sealed. Yeah, exactly. And cool. that's also something you can easily do at home. Like you don't necessarily have to even have an right. immersion circulator. Uh -huh. You can do this at room temp in a little, you know, uh, oh, I want to say Cambro, but I guess Tupperware at home. <laughs> yeah, whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever can hold something like water. that, you know, whatever can yeah, exactly. contain uh, liquid. Cool. And yeah. th those uh, circulators are now available on Amazon everywhere. They're not, you know, they aren't the rare, uh, you know, super culinary um, tool that they used to be. You can buy them for under a hundred dollars. They're very handy. I think if you, you needed an excuse, this is your excuse. Oh, for sure. Uh, and I mean, as far as like the, the cocktail way, like everything that we do, this is the way to infuse things into booze, whether that be fat with like a fat wash, like we're going to do with brown butter or uh, with like just infusing with either fruits or even like hard spices. We, we take black rice, toast it, and even just add water, cook that sous vide with the black rice to pull all the flavor out of the rice, then add sugar to make a syrup out of that. So like it's it's really just like one of the most necessary tools for like modern cocktail mixology, if you will. I hear yeah. you. And I think a lot of people will be curious to see how you manage to marry those flavors. A lot, a lot of people when cooking at home uh, are, are wondering, how do, we get, how do we get these flavors to be big and powerful and speak for themselves on the plate and also marry with the other ingredients in the dish? And I think everyone is curious about fat washing We've been hearing a lot about it lately. It's not, I don't think it's a new technique. Cameron, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's been used for a while now, but uh, it's becoming more and more common and, and more and more you know, part of the parlance of craft cocktailing. Yeah, I mean, the, the technique was taken by Don Lee from basically like perfumery. Uh, it was a way of um, transferring like the smell of something across, but basically, Don Lee ended up using it at Please Don't Tell or PDT here in New York City in what is accredited as normally the first like fat washed cocktail. And that's the uh, Benton's Old Fashioned with like Benton's uh, bacon. And it was a bacon fat wash of the whiskey. So you're getting like a bacon old fashioned, which, you know, and also when you're looking at the liquid, it's still clear, but you're getting that like fatty bacon, you know, 
Uh, so that was probably the first time it was used or what's widely known as like the moment that moved into the liquid world. <laughs> Uh, Very cool. And yeah, and now we mostly use it for a lot of a lot of different things, but brown butter we'll use today, and that's one of my favorites. To do. Can't wait to see how this all works. I'd love. Uh, what do you have in, in store for us first? What's the first cocktail? First cocktail is going to be this uh, eggnog. Um, Very cool. So, so the first step in this will be taking butter, browning it, and you've chopped up a couple hazelnuts, and all of this, I believe, is already been sent to you or will be sent to you again, um, the exact measurements. But basically you're gonna like brown the butter with hazelnuts, toast that up, and then basically measure the booze, add that to the booze. And you can either let that sit at like room temp, uh, preferably as long as possible, you know, but at minimum like three hours, or you can toss it in like an immersion circulator bath like we have here. So this is, um, whiskey that has like the brown butter and hazelnuts going all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna ask to slow down for a second here because um i'm even a little confused and uh it looks very cool and very culinary technique heavy so the bag you lifted up contains the uh whiskey out of a bottle into the bag yes exactly so just regular, so just not regular. Combine... there's nothing we do is regular right but some extraordinary whiskey and i'm sure you'll tell us all about your favorite brand yeah, so Wild Turkey 101 is absolutely my favorite brand. Very cool. Um, for the rye and the bourbon, it's it's incredible. Um, with this, I mean, the one that I'm about to do for the restaurant is actually going to be a blend of like the Wild Turkey 101 rye and cognac. Uh, not Wild Turkey cognac, Pierre Ferrand. Right. But that's just one of my favorite blends of boozes that I think works really well with this, like fatty, Wild creamy texture. Wild turkey is available to everybody, right? You can get this in the everyday liquor store. It's not a big, hard, uh, overwhelming journey, right? Like some of the other. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can even buy it in Japan, anywhere you want. It's <laughs> and it's still reasonable price. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right. It hasn't become one of those fetishized whiskeys that uh, you can only buy, uh, you know, at auction. No, definitely not. This is like the most reasonable the it's becoming like very quickly a a like bartender favorite yeah um i mean a short small aside from that like i've gone to the distillery myself three different times wow. and what you would think is just like oh wild turkey because it's like 20 bucks you know like there's yeah. all these other bourbons blantons whatever right, right. no what Weller. is going into Happy, the bottle you know, at these yeah. places exactly is just as special if not more and even more selective um they just happen to do it at like a greater scale because they're able to so it's really special and like my immediate go-to for any whiskey related things because they'll also hold up in cocktails with that 101 proof it's yeah so i'm sure you picked 101 for a reason other than the obvious more alcohol but uh these whiskeys have different proofs what's the uh, it's i think it's got to be 148 or barrel proof to be considered a whiskey is that right correct me if i'm wrong but uh something like that and then it gets diluted down oh i i think that's more of like uh whether it's like bonded than into like straight whiskey there there are a lot of different right. classifications of right whiskey. so these are markers that that people use to classify whiskey as whiskey and then of course you've made the choice to add a little more alcohol to the eggnog which i'm sure works perfectly with the other ingredients yeah and it actually allows you to use less booze than you would of something that was a lower proof oh interesting that's cool. you know what i mean because yeah. it's gonna it's gonna go a lot further so anyway, we're going to take the brown butter, the hazelnuts, and basically combine that with uh, the whiskey, which I've done in this bag. Mm -hmm. And if you've never sous vide something, it could be weird because you're like, oh, I need a vacuum sealer. I need all this other stuff. Not necessarily. Um, so what I like to do with this is just basically zip it across the majority of it to where I can just put my finger in. Oh, this is and cool. Then this if is a great just, way to work around the typical challenges of sous vide. If you just push the rest of it down into the water up until all the air is gone, zip it, it's it's done. You know, you use the force of the water pushing on the right, bag, all of the air out, done. Yeah, so, so anyway, you, you were you were pretty subtle about it and uh, 
I, I think for you, this is every day. So you don't realize how gigantic Very much. a technique <laughs> this is. But for the people at home, using the force of the water to expel remaining air is brilliant and something you should start learning how to do at home. He just saved you, you know, $200 for a sous vide machine. You no longer need to vacuum seal anything. And using a Ziploc bag is just so smart. Yeah, and I, I, I do, as a rule, generally use the, the freezer bags, which are a little bit thicker. Um, and these are all food safe bags. You know what I mean? You're not, you're not worried about like plastics leaching into everything. Um, you're generally only doing something for an hour or two at a time. So yeah, that's what we do. Love so them. once you've let Love it like cook at, I normally do things in Celsius um, around like, depending on what it is, with the, this brown butter hazelnut, I'll probably do like 60 degrees Celsius. Um, and just to, for further education, 52.5 is normally where I do a lot of other stuff. So a lot of like softer ingredients, like um, uh, let's just say like pandan leaves or um, even like fruits. Basically the higher in temperature you go when doing sous vide, um, the more you're able to pull out, but that helps when you're doing like harder spices as well. But with these nuts and this brown butter, I just want to pull everything freaking possible I can into the boots. Uh, so that's what we're doing. And then once you've done that for an hour, you could go longer if you want. Um, you're basically just going to freeze the back and oh, it's going to okay. come out. All the fat will solidify. And at that point, you can just basically strain it I'll strain it once through a normal chinois or like mesh strainer. And again, through a coffee filter, even just a paper coffee filter from the store, wet it and put inside that uh, mesh strainer. And you will end up with a clear liquid like right here that uh, now contains like this, the smell, the taste of that brown butter and hazelnut. All beautifully infused with each other and clear and I guess washed, right? Is the term clarified? Yeah, yeah. We call it a we call it a fat wash, and you can do this with coconut oil as well, even like peanut butter, because that's a uh, peanut oil. So you're you're using the fat from the peanut. Um, okay. So we are going to take brown sugar and then crack five eggs into this thing, and we're doing the whole egg. Which freaks uh freaks some people out, but just is what it is. Liquid chicken. <laughs> Why would it freak anyone out? One of my favorite cocktails uh, to make is a flip, which is a full egg inside every drink, um, and that always freaks people out when we're at the bar, just uh -huh. cracking a whole raw egg into a tin. And even last night, someone's reading the menu and just like, wait, so that says whole egg. Does that mean whole egg? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not cooked, not pasteurized, not sterilized, not, you know, everybody expects so much to be done to the food that when you actually serve something in its natural state, it's unusual. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but I mean, we're going to like whip it, aerate it, almost make like a meringue out of it. Um, I mean, it's called eggnog, right? Yeah, to have exactly. Before I even do that, I'm going to throw in this um, vanilla extract. Let's do it here. Half teaspoon. Do you have a favorite brand? We always love to ask the favorite brand question. For the home cook who's you know, <laughs> shopping on Amazon or some local stores. Yeah, I mean, no, <laughs> because... <laughs> Well, you're, I mean, as a chef person, you're going to understand this is the Baldor special brand. You know, it's like a bourbon vanilla extract. That is my favorite. I don't know how you get it if you don't work in a restaurant, but <laughs> maybe you know. You actually can go online now and buy from Baldor directly. Now we're talking about Baldor and it's a little bit inside baseball, but this is like go to purveyor for, you know, all the best chefs in New York and now more and more at the rest of the country. Uh, they started uh, their Baldor Foods online. You can buy from them retail now. Uh, and they really provide everything from fresh produce, farmer's market food, 
to, to supplies like, uh, you know, vanilla and meats and, and poultry and fish even now. So uh, now you know the secret to most, most of the success of the chefs of New York City. Absolutely. Uh, I put some green stuff in here. It's going to become pretty apparent in a second when I blend it. But What's this green? Is What's green? Pond pandan extract. Oh, so pandan, okay. pandan is a plant from Southeast Asia. It's very common in like Filipino food. Um, and I mean, just Southeast Asian food in general. Um, but we use it in a lot of different drinks, a lot of different ways. Um, I used to be the head bartender at Mace here in New York City, which is basically exploring spices from around the world. And we always had at least one pandan cocktail on the menu. And it's, I'm continuing that tradition here at Manhattan as well. But it's one of my favorite things. It's called almost like the, the vanilla of like Southeast Asia. Um, so it's gonna be like very like grassy, nutty. One of my favorite things to pair it with is like coconut or even like suggestion of coconut. You know what I mean? You're really going for that roasty, nutty vibe. Tropical. So I added that. Yeah, somewhat. I'm basically gonna blend all the sugar and the eggs together. Really trying to emulsify it. So right now it's it's sugar, eggs, pandan, vanilla. And did you uh, put anything else in there while we weren't looking? No, just that. Okay. And now I am going to basically add in some almond milk. You can use awesome. whatever Interesting milk you want. Choice. But like to keep in that, um, that nutty vibe, I, I wanted to use the almond. So not for dairy also, concerns or anything like that or, or flavor preferences or? Oh, I mean, the flavor is great. And I know that through experience, but um, I'm also like semi-lactose intolerant. Oh, but the good, one good, thing good. I, I can't, yeah. the one thing I can't ditch <laughs> in this recipe and we're already using butter in the, the booze is this, this heavy cream and the okay. way it comes yeah. across. Got it, got it. But instead of using normal milk, I can absolutely throw in like an alternative milk. So uh, you could really do whatever you, whatever you really prefer. Cameron, I'm so impressed by you. I have to say this. I'm surprised you're not making fresh almond milk for this cocktail. <laughs> you're like, I've done enough. I've done enough. I've, I've done enough. <laughs> Uh, so then we're throwing in the heavy cream. It's basically just like once you've like whipped the eggs, you're you're going to add in this heavier element of cream, and then you're going to really whip that together as well. And obviously, if you have uh, a, an immersion blender like that available, you should use it. It's you know miraculous. No, I, I can't say anything other than it's miraculous. It's changed cooking. You know, it's changed the game for cooking for over 30 years. Absolutely. Yeah, and with that said, you can easily, obviously, do all of these steps in a blender. Right. I have done it in a Vitamix as well. It works just as well. This is just a little easier for the room we're in. <laughs> uh, we are going to then, now that we've basically thrown everything in there, Start adding all the booze. Ah, the fun part. Here comes a good part, everybody. Yeah, so this stuff, allspice dram. Can I see that one more time? Allspice. Allspice dram. St. Elizabeth. Okay. Allspice dram. Ooh, that's dram. cool. Yeah, this is um, something you'll see at a lot of bars because they'll uh, over order it and then just be stuck with a million bottles over time. Uh, that being said, this is about how much we're using for this this cocktail. But this thing goes in. I I use this for hot toddies. I use this for like literally anything fall winter. This is the move. Um, the pumpkin pie spice side of things. Is that what you're getting at at all? That. Yeah, I mean, minus the pumpkin, right. but yeah, Mace, this is all spice nutmeg. This is the spice. Yeah. 
So we throw that in there. Uh, what are we grabbing of PX? So Pedro Jimenez Sherry. This is um, a little Yum. bit of like a sweeter Sherry. Yeah. Also but delicious. You're get like, exactly. Especially paired with different foods, cheeses. You're going to get a lot of like, like a nutty, but also like dark caramelized like raisin, if that makes sense. It's really beautiful. And all of this stuff, basically all we're doing is just adding layers and layers of flavor on this. So we already, you know, have two different kinds of sugar, the vanilla, the pandan, the PX, the cream, the almond. Um, we're, we're just building and building. And, and can I point then, out that a person with your level of skill and talent, which is obviously, you know, very high level, you measure you still stop and measure. And I noticed that bartenders generally measure everything, unlike chefs who don't measure anything. Uh, how do you, what's your, what are your feelings about measuring versus not measuring? This is more, um, it's easier to replicate. Yeah. And like to, to go with like the chef thing, like, oh, you grab this random vegetable, that random vegetable or, right. or different chicken or whatever they might each taste slightly different from the next. And so you're gonna wanna like check and taste. I mean, obviously depending on your purveyor or whatever, but like there are maybe more variables, but even then the majority of things, even in our kitchen are definitely measured like to the gram, you know, depending on the recipe. Um, with this, yeah, this is, um, it's almost like getting more into like baking. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not going to ruin the recipe, but like we want everything to be as precise and exact. And when you order one on Wednesday, we want it to taste the same as when you order it on Sunday and the next day and the next day, no matter who's bartending, no matter who's doing what, everything comes down to like, we picked a recipe, we're sticking to it. You know what I mean? Right. And, and this, in the this yeah. spirits world, you know, when it comes from a bottle, you know it's going to be the same every time pretty much right it's not like we got fish today that was fresher than yesterday or we have produce today that has a bigger flavor than you know the basil did yesterday it's it's very consistent so it pays to have these super precise recipes absolutely yeah and that is like the one leg up we have on the kitchen who constantly has to taste no matter what um we still do though but yeah well, clearly clearly so, you're putting a lot of palate work into this food or into these drinks yes so then we're going to add the the brown butter whiskey and basically just try and emulsify that whole thing the cool thing about pandan is that it's the extract is green it's almost like a like a grinchy nog if you will <laughs> oh that's funny that's good i didn't even think of that that's a great great little yeah. uh playful note um so at this point at home you're basically good to go um you can put this in bottles or you know just quart containers whatever keep it in the fridge and you can either have a uh like a blender to just like whip it up whenever you want i normally keep this cold by the way i it always weirded me out when people came in they're like wait a second your eggnog's not hot like oh yeah no why would yeah. it ever be you're no, cooking cold, eggs cold is the problem yeah. temperature right yeah <laughs> yes but in case anyone was wondering yeah cold and then um you're basically just going to like whip it and aerate it in a um a blender or even uh so I have this little Japanese ceramic mug. And if you wanted to do like a la minute, you know, just uh, whip it in there. Woo, uh oh. But anyway, you, you really just want to froth it up. And then at that point, you're going to basically take, uh, oh, let me wipe this up. Take a little nutmeg put it across the top and you're ready to serve. So basically the whole idea is just one also 
the cool thing about eggnog, once this is done, this can stay in your fridge for like a year. Wow. Okay. With the ABV yeah. of the wild turkey, mm -hmm. you're you're good to go. Like aged eggnog is a thing. And it will actually like round out the flavors as you go. Um, so it's pretty cool. I have one that's like this exact recipe that's uh, a year in my fridge right now. Which is pretty amazing. We'll be over later. Yeah. Do not release the address. Yeah, so the amount of alcohol that's in there is enough to sort of keep it stable for a long time. That's what that's what your point is about ABV, right? Yeah, exactly. Which sounds, I mean, it's still even crazy to me because we, we are still dealing with like dairy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but we can move into the next cocktail. Yeah, let's do that. Did you did you get a taste? Oh yeah, yeah. I've, I can't I mean, taste I've had it. Plenty so. myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, we're gonna yeah, have to live through amazing. you for a minute. Yeah. Good. 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 <laughs> <laughs> now, are these recipes yours? Are these your babies that you've? Uh, yeah. So, and... um, oh man, I mean, Tough every question, let's recipe move on. really okay. comes yeah. from some <laughs> other recipe. Yeah. 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 So these are definitely unique to me, but like this comes from a long time of learning other yeah. recipes. So there's Seems super you know, unique there's and a, special to me. So there's a cocktail that's like somewhat similar, um, of an eggnog that so mace is actually the first bar that ever turned into like a christmas bar every christmas called miracle um here in new york city and so i worked in a christmas bar for the last like four years in a row listening to only christmas music every single day for like a month and a half every year um but we would always have an eggnog and so this is basically my spin on my favorite eggnog from that uh introducing the the brown butter, the hazelnut, and the pandan. Um, and then this next one as well is basically a riff on another like classic, like clarified milk punch cocktail from there. Uh, but yeah, these are terrific. These so are my so these cocktails are just to clarify <laughs> both, they're definitely your babies. I know that people aren't making these cocktails all over New York City. These are super special, rare. The amount of work that goes into them and thought is, you know, very, very unique and special. And but these are available at the Manhattan bar at, at the moment. Yeah. So we are about, be, you're actually getting a sneak peek of okay. the eggnog, which we're about to debut like next terrific, week. Terrific. Terrific. Um, and then we actually have a cold version of this clarified milk punch on the menu already. But I'm going to show you a way to kind of like kick that more into like, I don't know, a holiday party vibe at home okay. and like a hot version. But okay. you can enjoy both cold and hot. The hot toddy version. Um, I love it. So if you're not familiar, I'm just going to kind of start and talk. A clarified milk punch is a very old style of cocktail. I mean, like Thomas Jefferson was making this crap. Uh, he, back then it was like really hard to get fruit, you know, you couldn't get like necessarily lemons, limes, oranges, or pineapples all the time. So when you did, you wanted to preserve it and in a, obviously booze, so you could drink it and you basically make a cocktail, take milk, curdle the milk, add the cocktail to those curds. And then you're going to strain everything through those curds and you're going to be left with like the whey and all of the cocktail, but minus the solid particulate. At that point with the alcohol, basically uh, fortifying and like preserving it, acting as a preservative, it's, it's basically able to be stored in a cellar and you can actually age milk punches as well. So both these things you're learning tonight are able to be kept for months and months in your fridge. Um, here at Manhattan, we, we use soy milk because I feel like it's less freaky to people when you're hearing about milk in your cocktail. Um, and in fact, we, we actually remove the word milk from the menu and just label it as like soy, you know, 
you're only getting like the soy, the whey. Um, and so basically you're gonna take roughly like 20 to 25% of the total volume of a cocktail and use that amount of soy milk. And then basically just enough lime juice to curdle it. And you're, you're starting to form these like chunks. If you can see, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it, it is visibly broken at this time, which is what we call it when you can see it like that. So one very cool thing about Milk Punch is that we'll actually like strip tannins um, and even color from things when it takes all the solids. So you're able to oversteep tea and get all the flavor from the tea without the tannins, the bitterness, the astringency, anything. Wow. That's cool. Um, That's so, very cool to know. Yeah. So we basically make a spice blend. Uh, in this cocktail, it's cinnamon. You have uh, allspice, clove, cardamom. Um, we basically grind all those up, add those to coconut water, and make a tea out of that. Add the black tea, get that going, bring it up to like a boil, and then just cover it, let it simmer. Um, you're going to add those like lime peels, some sugar, basically make like a little syrup out of it. Um, and it doesn't matter how long it sits because once you add those curds, it's going to strip all the astringency and you're just left with like the pure like flavor coming across. Um, Would you compare it so, to a distillation process maybe where you're trying to focus the flavors or is it something totally different than that? Uh, not quite. Yeah. Distillation can do different things. Yeah. Right. Right. You're, you're still going to be left with like solid particulate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is basically just making a syrup that's going to, or milk punch in general, um, it's just going to be very like texturally slightly thicker, you know, because mm -hmm. you're still getting the whey. You're separating like the curds from the whey. So you're getting like a little bit of a thicker, like viscous texture. Um, and it's also going to come out completely clear, which is super cool. So we have that coconut water with all those spices. In this cocktail, we're using like a pumpkin puree, sweet potato juice, and a pineapple juice. Um, you can you can mess around with this, you know, whatever like different things you want. I came up with this recipe, you know, um, basically with something called like the flavor bible, you know, comparing flavors, what goes together, but like obviously gourds and something tropical is really going to work. Um, so the main component of this though, is booze that's been blended with figs. So we take dried figs, these, um, and basically just like blend it with the booze and you just want it to be as emulsified as it possibly can be. You know what I mean? No solid particulate left. Uh, the one that we like to do here is with tequila but this recipe would work really well with rum as well. So basically just going to add all that. And this is a, and the same mixture we're talking about still, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And I don't know if you can see, but this looks pretty, pretty gnarly. Pretty and now heady. we're also, yeah. also going to add this like curdled milk mixture to it. Whoa, okay. So... If you can see, that looks. Uh, yeah, let's does get that a little look like something so you want to drink. It looks like look something we we'll want to drink, drink the minute you've the minute you've strained it. <laughs> but it's really cool to see the curds form. That's that's the key here. That those curds will will grab along with it uh, particles that you're trying to re remove, right? That you're trying exactly. to strain out. Yeah. So at this point, I'm like, going to take a little bit like a making chinois. a consomme. I'm going to take a chinois, line it with cheesecloth or any any kind of cloth really and if you use cheesecloth you want to use a couple layers um we use super bags which are kind of expensive but the best um either way ideally i would want to let this sit in the fridge for like a day and all those flavors are just going to be like meld more together in a way that's hard to describe a lot of it that's when a lot of those tannins are going to be stripped away 
Um, and then you're just basically gonna like slowly pour it through. And this is gonna look really gross the first time it comes through. Because what you're doing is letting a nest of curds basically form around that cloth. So once that nest has formed, you're going to basically pour what you already strained back into another container and then pour it back into the nest of curds. And you never want to go higher than the nest of curds that you've already created because the it's not the cheesecloth that's giving you that clear liquid, it's the curds. So you really just want to use that nest and that's what's going to pull everything else out. Um, so after a couple times of doing this, and I don't think we have like a day to do this. <laughs> I'm just gonna put this down here. Let's see the swap out. But well, for, for for those watching at well, home, TV uh, magic. Yeah, when you hear of a craft cocktail, this you know Cameron puts the craft in the in the in the craft cocktail. This is a lot of handmade stuff. Oh, now look at that beautiful liquid that's in that bottle. That's yeah, how clear it like, ends up. It's it's perfectly clear. Yeah. Uh, fun fact as well, like the only colors that ever really come through on a milk punch are basically like a brown to yellow to red and even, you know, like watery type clear, but other colors will also just be pulled out selectively by the curd. So even if wow. you did like, let's say a blue, blue curacao in a milk punch, the curds would actually filter out the blue. Um, so it's a really interesting, very cool process. And it is one of my favorite styles, if not my favorite style of cocktail, just because of the amount of complexity that I can get and like texturally as well. Yeah. So you mentioned sweet potato juice. Can we just touch on how uh, someone at home could make sweet potato juice, you know, uh, fairly simply? Uh, well, outside of like a masticating juicer, um, I suppose you could get some sweet potatoes and make like a slurry in your blender, right? Yeah, you're yeah. more of the chef guy. You does that work? <laughs> yeah, I mean you could you could blend it and strain it, and I'd be I'd be thrilled with that. Is it is it a cooked sweet potato juice or is it a raw sweet potato juice? No, we uh we cut raw sweet potatoes and okay. just put them through. You juice them. You juice them. A thing it. that juices yeah. them. Yeah. Very cool. Um, but if you wanted to, you could do cooked sweet potato in that blender style and okay. blend it into something with a little bit of water to like thin it. Um, Got it. And that would be great. Absolutely. And so then you also you point, mentioned uh, the flavor Bible. And I just want to take a second to recognize uh, my friends Dornenberg and Page who wrote the flavor Bible. I think you're talking about the book, the flavor Bible, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a, you know, treasury of information and food pairings. And uh, I'm thrilled to hear you bring it up because I think it's one of the, the best works on the subject of flavor and what goes with what, which is, you know, the, the, uh, the question that is always asked, how do you know what works with what? Well, the Flavor Bible is a great way to, to get a head start. Absolutely. Um, that is, has been like one of the, the hugest helps for me. And so my, my old boss at Mace, his name's Nico DeSoto. He is a famous French bartender who now just permanently travels the world eating at the world's best restaurants and at the world's best bars. And he gets inspired by all of these crazy dishes he gets to try. And in fact, like uh, I do, you know, after studying under him, I have, I think, two different cocktails on this menu that are from like an 11 Madison Park, uh, like recipe book. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. all about finding those like, oh, the chefs did all the hard work of pairing these flavors, you know, and they clearly work at their place. So let me try them. <laughs> um, I don't get to travel around the world going to the world's <laughs> best restaurants and bars. So you already work at one. The, so. Yeah. yeah so I'm, I'm using the flavor Bible, you know, if I have an idea of like guava, um, like I wanted to, I wanted to make a cocktail out of this uh, Chinese booze called Baijiu. And if anyone's ever had it, it's pretty rough, but there are notes of pineapple that come from it. And I was like, okay, pineapple. I look up pineapple. I find obviously it pairs with something else tropical, guava. From guava, 
I look and I find, oh, guava pairs really well with tomato, surprisingly. Okay, I look up all of those and I cross reference with what they all kind of meet and they all also pair with cocoa. And so I ended up making a cocktail with like the, the pineapple basically vibe you're getting from the booze, the guava, tomato and cocoa nibs. Um, and so that's kind of how that comes together. You know what I mean? Um, no, I understand. You, you, yeah. You're using uh, inspiration from savory dishes. You're, you're working out the recipes uh, based on the flavor pairings already created. And uh, it's a great takeaway for the person at home who wants to do something different, but doesn't want to start from you know scratch at zero. You can, you can use the Flavor Bible or an 11 Madison Park cookbook and turn that into a liquid version of the, of the main course, I guess, or the, the plated dish. It's brilliant. I love the way you think about this. I haven't heard a, another bartender talk about craft cocktails in this way. So thanks for the unique yeah. perspective. Yeah, no worries. I, I mean, it's, it's pretty rare. You know, it's a little more common in maybe like London, but it's, and then at that point, it's about how do you translate those flavors to a liquid, you know? Right. I, I yes. want brown butter. I want hazelnut. Well, right. that's best done through a fat wash sous vide. Mm -hmm. I want cherry. Maybe that's best done through like acid adjusted cherry juice, you know? Mm -hmm. So that comes with the territory. Uh, for the last thing with this yeah. cocktail though. All right. Basically, you can drink it cold on ice. Or in uh, this version, I don't have a crock pot on me in this room, but I would just keep this hot on low as you would like a mulled wine. And then basically you're just gonna pour that into coffee cups, any kind of mug you have. And then you can use a pumpkin butter. Whoa, okay. And you're basically making like a hot buttered rum Yum. situation with that. And then you can like emulsify that, you know, with like the same wand, you know what I mean? The little uh, a mini immersion blender, the little frother. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a great tool. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, so it's a hot, hot toddy, hot buttered rum situation, uh, and that's also on the menu right now at Manhattan. Not hot though, cold. Okay, yeah. I, well, I'm sure it's great, cold or hot. I have a question about that. When you heat up alcohol, doesn't it lose some of the uh, alcohol content? Do we are we uh, are we okay with that? No, I mean it depends on how hot you're. Okay, how yeah. Hot so you're the, going. So we're talking about there's just an like evaporation body temp, right? level of yeah. Exactly. Okay. There's there's like an evaporation point of alcohol for sure. Um, yeah. And you're not going to do that. But yeah, Very for the cool. most and part, we... you're good. And that's also why you're, you know, you're bagging this stuff when you're doing the immersion circulator situation. Like you got to go pretty hot, to start losing the booze. Because, um, we you know, we do like an Irish coffee as well. A lot of cool stuff. Yeah, for pouring um, 101, we want to we want to reserve some of that some of that alcohol. Um, you, exactly. uh, you you mentioned the flavor bible earlier. I just want everyone to know that the link to the flavor bible is in the chat. It's one of the greatest books about food ever written. I happen to know the author, author as well. Uh, I love that you're you you know it's I think it's about 20 years old. I love that you're bringing it up now because it's as current today as it was back then. I also want to mention that you guys are offering a bonus uh, on a gift card, right? I believe that uh, Union Square Hospitality is offering a $25 bonus on a gift card. Uh, so if you buy a gift card at uh, ushg.com uh, or wherever you buy those gift cards, you're getting a $25 bonus. And we just put the link in the chat. So uh, that's pretty cool. 25 bucks will pay yeah. for at least two cocktails, right? <laughs> uh, maybe not two. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah, it'll pay for gonna, one and a half. Yeah. But, it's going so to people... help out. Can I just ask you this? When people come to Manhattan, should they ask for you and look for you? Will you be will you be available or will you be sort of in the back, you know, running around prepping and you're at the front and center bar, right? Yeah. Cool. Uh, so make sure you ask for future, camera. Make sure you sit right in front of them. Maybe in the future I can hide more, but <laughs> right now, 
I'm bartending uh, Tuesday through Fridays, every day behind the bar from open till just about close. All right, that's incredible. Um, the bar opens at four and the, the bar ends at like 11. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. It's a beautiful view if you've never seen it. The best place to get like golden hour, you know what I mean? Yeah. And even absolutely. on a stormy day to watch a yeah. storm roll in is like actually my favorite. Yeah, I mean, I think um, it's, yeah, the it's a 250 place. degree view, right? It's almost a 360 degree view. I, I believe the whole space is 360, but from the bar, it's about 280. Um, you get to you get to look at uh, the downtown bridges and downtown buildings, a little bit of the west side. It's it's an incredible view. I also think it it really captures. Uh, the magic of New York City, and I'm, I'm, while I was there over two weeks ago, I'm just going to say that for the holidays, I have a feeling it's going to be the perfect sort of mix between magic and, you know, culinary prowess and bartending prowess uh, to feel like a, a real New York experience, a memorable one. Absolutely. You just had that magical feeling when you walked into the room and you see the bar and the view behind it, and probably a lot, lot to do with you, Cameron. Uh, felt like magic when I was there, and, and you weren't even open yet. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, the bar program has like been a a big focal point of the whole the whole program. We opened without a head chef, and that's when the bar program became more important and just small bites. Most recently we had like Justin Bogle, who's normally the, uh, or the former executive chef at Le Cuckoo and Gilt formerly. He's now running the show and it's incredible. I firmly believe that if we hadn't started the food menu so close to the Michelin rating, we'd be sitting with a star or two right now, but that's for next year. For sure, next year for sure, we'll be celebrating at least two stars. Uh, Justin, of course, is an extraordinary talent. Uh, Le Cuckoo, the legend of Le Cuckoo speaks for itself. I just want to remind everyone that uh, you can join Manhattan for New Year's Eve. There's, there's going to be an open bar DJ, dancing, incredible views. Uh, I don't see the price. I imagine it's appropriate and not too expensive and not, <laughs> not inexpensive either. You don't want inexpensive for New Year's Eve. Hey, it's absolutely appropriate. Cool. We have a couple of questions. Uh, Eva Heineman, who's a loyal fan, uh, who's been on almost every one of these uh, shows, wants to know where you can get the St. Elizabeth Dram. Most liquor stores. Yeah, yeah. okay. Great. And I so mean, especially common. especially in New York City, if you can't yeah. find it down here in Fidei, like just yeah. go, uh, go up to like Aster Wines and they have everything. You know what I mean? Oh, Aster. Yeah, that's a great, great idea. Yeah. Astor yeah. Place, 8th 8th and uh, Lafayette, I think. Uh, also now Donna, employee owned. Oh, yeah? Oh, cool. Yeah. Donna Cox wants to know, uh, she said, it's seriously boozy eggnog. Uh, what, do you think, what do you think the alcohol percent by volume is on that, the ABV? Oh, 20? I don't know. I mean, if you make it and taste it, it's, it's not going to come across as boozy as you think. It really well, is. I think, I think they're excited about how boozy it's. I certainly am. I mean, be excited about the effect, but the taste, it's not good. I guarantee you with For the sure. PX, everything else, like the mouthfeel, it's, you're not going to think it's super boozy. Yeah. Of course, it's going to be perfectly balanced and delicious. At Donna least to me, to know, the guy who yeah. drinks booze all the time. <laughs> Donna also, <laughs> also wants to know, where did you work in Seattle? It's her hometown. Ooh, yeah. So more into my story. Yeah. I, I moved to Seattle uh, from Boise, Idaho to go to college at um, the University of Washington, you where I studied economics, but I was working in hospitality during that time, of course. and I became like a bar manager and then the GM of a bar, and I was making more money than I would make writing policy or something out of college <laughs> and having more fun than probably doing that. So I just kind of stuck with that. Um, but in Seattle, I was the general manager of the Comet Tavern on Capitol Hill and the bar manager of Lost Lake. But I also worked at like Linda's, the Smith, like the Dershane group, really. But really just like dive bars. And when I, my girlfriend's from out here, she wanted to come back because all her family and friends are from here. I moved to New York and I could not get a freaking interview as a bartender because they all wanted New York experience. 
So I was like, okay, if I have to start from the bottom as a barback somewhere, I'm going to do it at all these cool cocktail bars I have books on and just see how far I can go within the cocktail side of things. And here I am talking to you. There you go, Donna. There you go, Donna. <laughs> Sounds like an incredible experience. Obviously, a degree in economics is the perfect way to prepare for a career in hospitality. We all know this. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, UW, great school. Rick Wang is asking, uh, is it DDD, Triple D? It's not Triple D. It's not Triple G. I'll let you guess what it is. I'm not allowed to tell you. We're talking about the show I'm shooting. Uh, and Cindy wants to know where you can get bottles to store the finished product. Good question, I think. Oh, I mean, man, if it was me, I would just get whatever Drink. is at the store and food safe and yeah. empty what's in it. You know Drink what I mean? Drink the booze, empty the bottle and, and reuse it, right? So yeah, glass, ideal, especially, yeah. especially for like storing. But there are plenty of food safe plastics that like drinks are sold to us in. Yeah. And you can do it in that as well, you know? Yeah, so You're save the booze about... bottle, save, save the, even the mustard jar or the jam jar. They're, they're all perfect for containing food after you've used it for its initial use. The glass is reusable endlessly. So save those jars, save those little containers and uh, you know, use them for your craft cocktails moving forward. I like Absolutely. this, it's gonna be a new tradition for us, Cameron. You know, Rocco, I actually, what was it? It was either last year or the year before, it was either Delta or Omicron when everything shut down again, all of a sudden I didn't have a job again. <laughs> I ended up getting a bunch of those like nutcracker bottles from ah, a place in the Bronx okay. where I made this nutmeg a custom label and I just started selling them. Oh, amazing. <laughs> so there's plenty it. of food safe bottles that you could use for this. Say less. Don't admit to too much here online. This is all going to be on the record. <laughs> If, if you guys don't know what a nutcracker is, I'm not going to tell you now because it's the wrong time and place. But uh, thank you so much, uh, Cameron. This was really eye-opening. Um, I knew that these were you know, incredibly well thought out and complicated uh, in a good way, but I, I had no idea that the flavor reach was so deep. Uh, I love that you work with Flavor Bible. I can't tell you how uh, tickled that makes me because uh, they're really, really wonderful authors and great friends of mine. Um, we all look forward to coming to see you at the bar. We're going to we're going to come in and shut you down right till 4 a.m. He's a very friendly oh, bartender, so he'll <laughs> he looks forward to that. Uh, make sure you bring <laughs> up the gift card when you go there and to let him know that you've got an extra $25 to spend. Uh, Manhattan is located uh, on the 60th floor of 28 Liberty Street in lower Manhattan. Uh, the, the link is in the chat. Uh, and visit our website for updates on future programs. Don't forget to uh, help support No Kid Hungry, the food security ch charity chosen by Manhattan. Uh, no Kid Hungry is a, a food security foundation I've, I've worked with for many, many years. They do great work. Uh, they're, they're, you know, like one of the big three or four uh, in New York that does extraordinary work. So hopefully um, you're still in a position to help out. Uh, and don't forget to post your plate. Take pictures of your cocktails. Post it for a chance to win a 30-minute virtual cocktail tutorial with head bartender Cameron Winkleman of Manahatta. Uh, he uh, will be looking at your visuals. I will be looking at your visuals. Everyone at the Downtown Alliance will be as well. Don't forget to tag Manhatta NYC and my name, Rocco Despirito too. Thank you everybody. Have a wonderful holiday. Stay tuned, check back with us uh, for upcoming programming for this winter and beyond. I look forward to seeing you or hearing from you either here or somewhere else in the future. In the meanwhile, have a wonderful holiday season and a happy new year. And thank you from Cameron and myself and everyone at the Downtown Alliance.